The movie begins in a remote little station, deep in space, orbiting a fiery star named Dante. A liaison shuttle arrives at the station, carrying a frozen prisoner that is immediately handled by the crew of that place. After going through the defrosting process, the very weak man is taken to his cell. Once the prisoner awakens, he is thrown into a cell to recover from the traumatizing process of being resurrected and feels the full brunt of the months that he had to spend frozen. After throwing up all over himself, he finds the standard prisoner clothes left on the floor and dresses himself. Elisa, a therapist on the station, awakens from sleep from her long journey and going through the usual process of her morning routine of showering and getting ready, she heads down to the main station. There she meets Karen, the station's chief, who gets her accustomed to the workings of the station. Elisa tries to make friends with one of the other women working there called Persephone, but her jokes about the station being a nutship were not received well by the lady and informs her that the place houses many criminals and mentally afflicted people. Persephone asks what Elisa did to be sent to a hellhole like Dante Station, but Elisa enthusiastically explains that she was there by her own choice to try new treatment methods on the patients. In the common area, the newcomer is introduced to his cellmates and receives special attention from Rasputin, who assumes the prisoner was sent by God because of his tattoo of the angel Michael smiting the devil on his arm. While taking him through the hallways of the cell, Rasputin and the newcomer run into Caesar, the prisoner's bully. Taking him to the dining hall, Caesar introduces him to the other prisoners, who are called Moloch and Lazar. The aggressive Caesar warns their new inmate that they will leave him alone as long as he abides by the rules, but it seems like the new prisoner was not really comprehending things well because of his disoriented state. In the working area of the prison, Persephone takes Elisa to the part of the ship where they monitor the inmates. She explains that they hear everything the prisoners do which contributes to their study but they avoid the video monitoring. Persephone then starts to introduce the new doctor to the prisoners, beginning with Buddha, a man who had killed many people whom he claims he felt sorry for and didn't want to witness their suffering. Persephone explains that the patient had fits of anger when he arrived, but he recently started to spend more time meditating. When Persephone tells Elisa that she doesn't know much about the man who arrived in the shuttle with her, she explains that he was found covered in blood in a drifting long-distance spaceship. Elisa continues to explain that the black box of the ship were so fried that they weren't really able to get any information. Out in the prisoner's common area, Cesar tries to show the new prisoner the workings of the place, explaining that he can use the card that they gave him to receive food three times a day. After an exhausting day, the new prisoner manages to get some time to himself after entering his private cell. A few minutes later, Buddha enters his room and sees the exhausted state of the newcomer and offers to give him some relief. Grabbing him by the throat, Buddha starts to choke the man but before he can do much damage, Caesar and the other men hurry inside the room and stop him. The prisoners think of teaching the aggressive man a lesson and follow Buddha outside the cell, and the doctors monitoring the prisoners every move notice the aggressive behavior and release a sedative gas to immobilize them, and Elisa then suggests a new type of treatment for Buddha which Persephone doesn't agree to, but Karen takes the initiative and opts to try it out. Getting Buddha strapped into the gurney of the lab, Elisa injects him with nanobots that would help make him more manageable. When he's returned back to the prisoner's quarters, Buddha starts to experience unbearable pain from the nanites bonding with his DNA. As he was writhing in pain on the floor, the new prisoner finds him and was able to make him feel better, and when he regains consciousness, Buddha was thankful for the aid that the newcomer has given him and lends him a hand back to his cell. Elisa returns to the observation room and gets into a fight with Persephone regarding her treatment methods and Elisa makes a point that the prisoners were the worst of what humanity had to offer and were only allowed to stay alive if they agreed to be experimented on. She wasn't really able to understand why Persephone had a problem with the high risks that she was willing to take. And questioning Elisa's harsh methods, the station's in-house prisoner computer technician Attila manages to override the secret command given to Elisa and find out that she had permission to kill everyone on the spacecraft as long as it helps her research. A few hours later, Caesar and his men gang up on Buddha, accusing him of being unable to control his emotions. He then orders Moloch to handle the man, urging him to use the sharp object that he was able to recover to kill the unstable man. 
Buddha promises that nothing like his previous outburst will ever happen again because he believes in the new prisoner, but Caesar refuses to believe him. When Moloch tries to attack Buddha, Rasputin intervenes and tries to protect the man by accidentally slicing Moloch's throat open. Noticing the very aggressive act, the doctors release a sedative gas again and just before the new prisoner uses his unexplicable powers to save the dying man. The hands-on researchers, CR and BR, get to the common area in time to find the complete completely healed Moloch, unable to explain his miraculous survival. Injecting Caesar with a dose of the nanites, the researchers leave the prisoner's common area, and when he awakens from the recent dose of sedatives, Caesar feels threatened by the arrival of the new prisoner that they've now all started to call Saint George and orders Moloch to quietly get rid of him. Following their leader's order, Lazar and Moloch head to George's room and find Rasputin guarding the entrance. Ganging up on him, they immobilize the man and attack George, and Lazar stabs him to death, and feeling a sense of responsibility for the man who saved his life, Moloch carries George to the door and tries to get him medical attention before their area was gassed once again. After the researchers stake in George for diagnosis, they are shocked to find all of his wounds are healed. Elisa plans to continue her research on the man, but she was consistently stopped by Persephone who finds her intervention odd. And Karen is forced to remove Persephone from the research upon Elisa's request. Karen explains to the shocked Persephone that the company that they worked for had given Elisa the right to take over the research and that they were forced to leave the station as soon as the shuttle was ready. After Persephone was removed from the lab, Elisa tries to inject George with the nanites, unaware that he's still awake. Grabbing her hand, he forces her into cooperating by threatening to stab her neck and dragging her into a secure part of the station, he makes sure that the others can get to him by locking himself out and pushing her forward to her companions. Once he escapes back to the prison's common room, George finds Caesar in excruciating pain after the nanites injected inside him have been activated. Kneeling next to him, George manages to cure him by absorbing what he sees as parasites residing on the man's brain. Immediately after the procedure, Caesar awakens feeling much better, but because of what George did, it causes him a lot of pain and makes him double over, screaming in agony. A few minutes later, the alarms start to blare, triggered by the devious Attila. Reacting very hectic, Attila informs his inmates about what he had done and then rushes to his room to off himself. The prisoners agree that they need to work together with the people in control. They then get information about the station crashing on Dante from the now dead Attila's doing and the prisoners decide to work together to save themselves. A few minutes later, Karen addresses the prisoners and tells them that the station has left its geostationary orbit and that their only chance of survival is to access their control panels under their quarters. He explains that they would be able to change the trajectory of the station by activating the backup reactors and taking the risk of joining the prisoners in an attempt to save everybody aboard, Karen heads down to the prisoners' quarters with his colleagues to find the trap door. While her crew was trying to save the station, Elisa releases the gas in the prisoners' chamber in an attempt to escape, but before she can get away, Lazar, who had held his breath through the gas, kidnaps her, and as Elisa recounts the unfolding events, we discover that she disclosed her plans to him about escaping, however, instead of respecting her decision, he exerted his authority and compelled her forcibly into the hallway, directing her toward the aircraft that was ready for departure. In the common area, George was the first to awaken from his slumber, sensing the urgency of the situation, and he wakes Persephone from her sleep, instilling her aid in attending to the other individuals who had fallen or required assistance. Once everyone regained their physical capabilities, they joined forces, albeit reluctantly, and together they confronted a new obstacle, a trap door that needed to be opened. As they pried it open, they were confronted with a startling and hazardous sight, boiling water. This dangerous barrier obstructed their path, impending their access to the crucial section of the ship that they needed to reach. In a desperate bid for survival, Caesar recognizes that their only hope lies on his willingness to take a daring step forward, and with a sense of duty, he selflessly volunteers to endure the scalding waters, wearing a protective suit to shield himself from the intense heat. Despite his best efforts to safeguard his well-being, Caesar plunges into the boiling water, only to discover that his protective gear falls short of protecting him. The heat almost consumed him entirely, bringing him perilously close to the brink of death as he valiantly reaches the other side. Undeterred by the harrowing experience, the group decides to test their luck once more, hoping for a more favorable outcome. 
In a bold attempt to explore an alternative path, the group decides to send George to venture into the fiery planet, however, as he approaches the area, an unexpected reaction occurs. The closer he gets, the more apparent it becomes that George is adversely affected by the environment. And despite this setback, George perseveres, absorbing the intense energy emitted by the volatile planet, and remarkably, George not only withstands the overwhelming power, but also manages to transform it. Through his resilience and resources, Forcefulness, he successfully reports back that the planet has transitioned into a less volatile state, and this unexpected turn of events brings a glimmer of hope to the group as they now have a chance to navigate through the planet with reduced danger and uncertainty.